Welcome to another In Conversation with me, Special J, here on Solid Radio. Today's conversation is all about Tiki the Tiger Cat. Tiki is a cat that was found with his mum in Yorkshire. He was taken in by Henry's Haven Cat Rescue, where it was discovered he was born with no upper eyelids. This meant the hairs from his skin rubbed his eyes, causing infection and pain. The operation to correct this was quite complex and costly. Tiki's story started when he came to the attention of Felix, a Huddersfield station cat, on her social media site. From there he came to the attention of Vicky, an ophthalmologist and a fan of the fluff. Vicky offered to carry out the surgery for free, but the drugs and anaesthetic would need to be paid for by the rescue centre. Four operations later, and Tiki has functioning eyelids, meaning no more hairs rubbing on his eyes. We spoke to Vicky about how it all started and what Tiki's up to now. Hi Vicky, welcome to Solid Radio. First of all, for those of us that follow Tiki on social media, we've been able to keep up to date with Tiki's story. But for those of us that are new to this or do not use social media, please can you tell our listeners how this all came about? Tiki's uh, story came about because I saw the appeal on um, Felix the Huddersfield Station Cats post where the charity that had Tiki in their care were trying to raise money for ophthalmic surgery. And that was really uh, the start. I, as an ophthalmologist, thought that perhaps I could offer to help and reduce the cost even further by offering to carry out the surgery free of charge. So I'd contacted the charity directly on Facebook and offered my services. I didn't realise at the time that the surgery was planned to be carried out with a colleague of mine, Neil Geddeson Fife. However, Neil's a really good friend and was not in any way concerned when I'd offered to take over and and do the surgery free of charge. What was going through your mind, Vicky, as you carried out these operations? Because I believe Tiki needed four? When we decided to carry out the surgery, uh, the first thing was to deal with the logistics and, and obviously Tiki being in Yorkshire and getting him up to Glasgow and arranging the time of it all was a little bit difficult. However, we managed that. Uh, Tiki ended up at the, the practice that I do a lot of work at in Glasgow called Taylor Veterinary Practice. And we started. I started to form a plan, uh, really, on how I was going to try and reconstruct his eyelids. There's a number of techniques that can be used, but speaking to um, some colleagues of mine in the States, one of whom is a retired, uh, very eminent veterinary ophthalmologist called David Wilkie, um, I'd sought his advice and decided on something called a, a lip-to-lid graft, the first surgery didn't go as well as I wanted. Um, I maybe was a little bit too ambitious and tried to carry out a graft using part of his um, lower eyelid and his his lip. And unfortunately, the first part of that graft from the lower eyelid, it failed and we had to reposition it. Um, the lip section of the graft healed really well but we still have a little bit of the upper eyelid that's not just quite as I would like in the upper right eye. Having learnt from that experience we did a straightforward lip to lid graft in the left eye which fortunately actually had more tissue to play with than the other eye so we ended up with a fairly good um, functional and cosmetic result. It was difficult because Um, There was the disappointment of having one graft fail and then having to go back and redo that graft and at the same time wondering when in the process I should start the opposite eye because obviously we wanted him to be comfortable enough and able to carry out his normal daily functions and be able to see. So it it really was down to Tiki on how well he dealt with each surgery and, and how fast he healed. Going through the actual operation all I'm concentrating on is is getting uh, this you know the, the the graft in the right place the sutures in the right place um, the skin behaves differently under tension and under anesthetic and you can plan a surgery with skin and then you can have to change it because every animal has very very slightly different tension lines which only become an apparent when you start um, grafting and and moving things around but ultimately um, by the time I carried out the last surgery I was fairly comfortable with the results and yeah he's had 
Uh, let me see, three surgeries on his right and, and one surgery on his left. Um, and I think we'll probably at some point do another one on the right just to close up that gap that's been left by the original graft, not healing the manner that I'd intended and having to be repositioned. As Tiki recovered, whose idea was it to keep us up to date with Tiki's progress via the social media? I personally love seeing new posts from Tiki. During Tiki's recovery, he was very popular with the nurses and tailors and they were always sending me sort of picture updates on how he was doing and how many cuddles he was getting. And then when I decided after his sort of third surgery that it would be good for him to recuperate in a in a home environment because he he was kind of restricted in the surgery. He he could get out, but only when there weren't any, any other patients or dogs or um, any surgeries going on. So he was a little bit restricted and we felt he could do with a little bit of um, exploration room and a little bit of normal environment. So I took him home between his third and his fourth operation and the nurses wanted to know how he was. So I was sending them picture updates and they were on my Facebook. And so it, the idea kind of started I guess from there, but also from updating Felix, um, who was then posting these updates on on the Felix, um, the, the Huddersfield Station cat page. And those were being responded to really positively by Felix's fans. And some of them were suggesting that actually they'd like to see Tiki with his own page. So in the end, um, after his final surgery, we decided to get Tiki's own page. And I now try and update it every day if I can. Uh, not always possible. Sometimes I have to schedule the posts a bit in advance, but um, I do tr try and give people a flavour of what it's like to live with um, a little ginger monster. Will Tiki need any more operations in the future? As I've said, uh, related to his surgery, he will probably have another surgery on the right eye. I'm not entirely happy with the way the graft had to be repositioned. It's functionally okay. It doesn't look as good as the other eye, but I do get the impression from time to time that he's just not quite as comfortable in that eye as the left. So I'm giving him a good three months after all of the original surgeries um, and possibly we'll even get to six months just to let all of the surgery settle down because you've got to bear in mind that when you carry out any incisive surgery, you do get scar tissue forming. And if you go in too quickly, that scar tissue is still in the process of developing. It can contract and it can make estimating what's going to happen in a second surgery quite difficult. So we need to give all that time to bottom out. And the other reason is that he needs time to grow um, because he was just a little kitten when he was brought to me. And the last surgery is very likely going to be a repeat of one of the, the first surgeries, which is a lip to lid graft. And I need him to grow and I need him to develop a bit more lip on that side so that we've got enough tissue to take up and successfully graft in, in that position. How does Tiki get on with your other two cats, Oscar and George, and of course your partner Craig? How does Tiki get on with her other two cats? Uh, well, they're all rescue cats. Georgie was the first rescue cat. Georgie is the tortoise shell. She is a little madam. Uh, she doesn't actually like any other cats and she thinks she should be an only child. So she, she tends to get um, quite hissy. Oscar is also a rescue, but he's been around the block a bit more and he's He's a bit more placid, although Tiki is pretty boisterous and has taken to sort of stalking them and trying to pounce on them, which I don't think either of them actually appreciate very much. Oscar tends to give him that really sort of get lost or I'll biff you with my paws look. Uh, Georgie will actually hiss at him and really get quite nasty. But it doesn't seem to bother Tiki. He just like, oh, this is part of the game. And he just <laughs> carries on. He He's got a positive little soul. He doesn't seem to, to um, doesn't seem to bother him at all. There were two rescue centres that cared for Tiki: Henry's Haven Cat Rescue and Angus Cat Rescue. Can you let our listeners know how they can help raise funds for these two amazing centres? Yeah, the two rescue centres that cared for Tiki, Henry's Haven Cat Rescue, were the first cat rescue that I encountered, and they were great because they were trying to raise the funds to get him his surgery, and. When we decided that we were going to send him up to Scotland, Angus Cat Rescue were great because they stepped in and provided a foster home with the lovely Nadia, who looked after him prior to him coming down to Glasgow. And then a little bit after his last surgery, uh, I, we'd actually booked a holiday. And so Tiki had to go back to Nadia for a week's holiday and recuperation, which was fine because I think Nadia had 
secretly fallen in love with him. So that was a good opportunity for her to sort of say her goodbyes before he moved in with us permanently. I think it's really important to understand that both of these rescues, neither of them are affiliated to national charities. Um, they are small local charities. I think as such, they're not even registered with the Charities Commission. They're they are run by individual people who are really doing their very best to ensure that strays do find some homes or are cared for, whether they be kittens, whether they be old cats. And every animal that they take in is taken in with the same love and care, whether it is a 21-year-old um, flea-ridden old tomcat or whether it is a little kitten. They absolutely adore them, but they all need treatment and they all need feeding. And it's very important that people understand that a lot of this is funded by donation. They don't receive any money from any of the national charities at all. Um, and most of the funds that they have are going towards vet treatment, which is why um, it's important that people keep donating. There's a lot of ongoing costs. There's a lot of food, vaccinations, flea treatment, worming. Um, but the biggest cost they have undoubtedly is probably vet treatment. Now, people will say, why don't the vets give their time for free? And why don't all vets give their time for free? And, and I'll be quite blunt. Vets are in business because they do provide a service that people do pay for. And if every veterinary practice provided every charity with everything for free, there would be much fewer veterinary practices out there because the costs of doing that to them have to be borne by somebody. And it's not going to be borne by the average pet owner who would not want to see their fees increasing just because the, the practice are, are, are carrying out charity treatments for free of charge. All um, vets will do their very, very best to try and help charities, but we all have bills to pay, we all have families to feed, and our overheads are quite simply massive. So it's important that people understand that whilst on this occasion, I was able to carry out Tiki surgery with my own equipment in my own time because he did not have an owner, he did not have anybody that could have at all stepped in for him and really the only people that were sticking up for him in that circumstance were the charity. However, they, the charity still had to pay for, um, at a reduced rate, for his anaesthetic and for his drugs because we have to pay for them um, and I'm still paying for that. I, am, I agreed to take over the payment for his anaesthetics and drugs and will still be paying for that out of my own pocket because I felt it was unfair when I took him on as a rescue to, to ask them to continue funding that. However, even at 25% discount, the cost of all of his anaesthetics and drugs so far has come to around about six or seven hundred pounds. And that's without the cost of the surgery. His surgery could easily have cost in excess of two to three thousand um, pounds, you know, depending on where and, and when it had been performed. So it, and that's not money that goes into my pocket, that goes to pay for my equipment, my training, my insurance, my memberships of professional societies that are required, the training that's required every year to keep that membership current. It all goes into that big pot of overheads and, and, and actually the fact that I have a successful business as an ophthalmologist and I'm very grateful for the business that I get from my clients has meant that I had a little bit left over that I can give and, and that's what I chose to do with Tiki. But I think it's vitally important that people understand how that works and that it's not something that we can do on every occasion for every charitable case. But if people want to donate to those two charities, absolutely Henry's Haven Cat Rescue and Angus Cat Rescue have been fantastic with Tiki. Now, Vicky, what made you decide to adopt Tiki? What made me decide to adopt Tiki? Oh, he's just, he's just adorable. He's so cute. He has the cutest little meow. He has the cutest little purr. He has the most positive outlook on life. He just wants to be friends with everybody. He is really playful and he's just a really lovely little soul, even for a feral cat. Somebody that was born in the wild and had a you know, a, a feral mum and didn't really know much about humans. He's so trusting. And I just felt that if anybody could give him a home, then I probably could, because at least if I need to carry out more surgery, which I probably will, then at least that wasn't going to be burdened on anybody else. It wasn't going to be a burden to the charity. And I suppose to a certain extent meant that we could take our time and, and try and get it right for him. 
Vicky's mum Jade has now found her forever home. How does that make you feel? I'm really pleased that Tiki's mum's got a forever home. I am over the moon, actually. I was quite sad to hear that nobody had taken her on because she's a really pretty little cat. But <laughs> with another tortoise shell in the house, I could understand that it wouldn't be for everybody. And cats don't tend to recognise social bonds, familial bonds, past sort of puberty. So Tiki would not recognise Jade as his mum. She wouldn't recognise him as her son. It doesn't work like that. Yes, there are occasions where sibling cats are brought up in the same household and they get on, but they get on just purely because there's no competition for resources. It's not that they recognise each other as brother and sister in that environment. It's That's too human an idea to impose on these animals. It really is more that cats prefer to be quite solitary. Um, if you ask Georgie, she'll probably tell you that. But they will tolerate other animals and other cats in their home if you provide enough resources, food, water, litter trays, that they don't have to compete for them. The minute there's any competition, they don't really like getting on. But as far as Tiki's mum goes, delighted that she's found a forever home because she's a really adorable, adorable looking cat. I've not met her, but she looks very pretty. We love seeing Tiki's adventures on Facebook. Any thoughts on writing a book? I honestly don't think that I've got the time to write a book about Tiki. I'd be delighted if anybody did want to write a book. But I think I quite like having that um, interactive um, social page for him on Facebook. We'll see how long it continues. There's... I know everybody adores seeing him and what's really lovely is some of the comments that are left from people who say I've had a really rubbish day at work and I've just seen your post and it's just made me smile or I'm having a really hard time in my life right now but you know the fact that Tiki's also had a hard time and he's come through it has made me feel an awful lot better about my own situation and I think that's the most positive thing to come out of the the page not that it's helped Tiki. Um, Tiki's Don't tell him, he's completely oblivious to it. Um, But he's oblivious to the fact that he's a star and his attitude to life and his positive sort of methodology of dealing with butterflies and um, things, it just makes people laugh, it makes people smile, it makes people feel a little bit warm and fuzzy and that's good, you know, we need that. Um, So I'm, I'm delighted to do the page. I think I draw the line at a book, but who knows? Watch this space. Stranger things have happened. We love Tiki here at Solly Radio and we are truly grateful to you, Vicky, for all you have done for Tiki. On behalf of our listeners and, of course, Sooty the Solly Radio cat, all the best for the future and hope we have raised awareness of the two rescue centres so people can donate much-needed funds for them to carry on their great work. We'll pop the link on our website for those of you wishing to donate. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about Tiki. Um, thank you for the opportunity to discuss some other sort of related issues like veterinary practice and strays and cat behaviour. They're all quite important. Um, as you can tell, I spend quite a lot of time observing these cats and, and the way that they interact is quite fascinating. And they are all little individual personalities, but we have to remember that they're not human. Um, and so we we might like to give them sort of human characteristics, but actually they they... They are felines. What's really lovely about Tiki is he just loves affection. So I'm sure he would be delighted to say a big hi to Sooty and to Felix and to Bolt and Geography Cat and Larry and everybody that has a cat page. Um, Delighted to be joining the feline stardom on Facebook. And... um, Yeah, if people would um, like to donate, it would be great if they could donate to uh, Henry's Haven or to Angus Cat Rescue. I think they would really appreciate that. And it would go some way to helping them with other stray cats.